All right, welcome onto the live stream, everyone. You're taking a look at Radar Omega this evening, and I hope you are um, doing having a great evening out there. Um, everything looks like it is should be working correctly. Um, so welcome into the stream. Um, let's go ahead and hop on into this. We'll get into the details here. Um, within the next few moments, let's just give everybody a second um, to get onto the stream. But I do think everything is going to be working um, correctly here. So let's just give this a second for everybody to kind of join the stream. Um, I hope everybody is doing well um, on this Tuesday evening out there. Um, it's been a kind of relevant a uh, relatively uneventful um, day other than snow exiting parts of the northeastern United States. Here's what our um, current radar is looking like as of this evening um, on MRMS radar data. And you can see we've got some snow kind of still pushing its way out of parts of the northeastern United States. Um, thank you so much for joining me, though. Alright, let's zoom out a little bit. We've also got, I think this radar is a little bit off. That's okay, let's go on over to um, HRRR model data and take a look at what we've got going on right now. You can see, as we make our way through this evening at this point, hello from Chickasha, um, Oklahoma. Hello to ya. Um, we've got this area of snow still continuing over parts of Maine. This is going to contribute um, to, to, you know, a, a little bit of some snowfall here over this area. Okay. Um, but at this point, uh, you know, the totals are going to be maybe three to six inches in some spots. But overall, the, the totals are beginning to wind down. Of course, we've pretty much gotten all the snow we're going to get here over parts of southern New England. Um, so we're done there. That's good news. Um, where we're also watching a winter storm is over here on the west coast. Um, so parts of northwest Oregon um, and then on down through the mountains of Oregon and northeast California. We've got some high elevation snowfall. Really, this whole system um, over that area is proven to be fairly dynamic at this point. Um, let's continue here and get into kind of the nitty-gritty of some other details as well. Um, let's see, we've got some, is there another ice storm and snow headed for the Mid-South? That is a great question, and you know, this is kind of a Q&A stream. Um, that's what I love doing on these live streams, so if you ever have any questions, um, feel free to drop them in the chat, and I'll get to them as quickly as possible, of course. Um, but yeah, great question about another storm coming to the south. Um, you know, let's take a look at the latest GFS run, because I think the GFS has had a pretty good handle on what's on the way. Um, and let's just kind of take a look at what we've got going on kind of beyond this evening. So here we go. Playing this out further, you can see, you know, as we go into the late week time frame, we're going to have what's in the Mountain West. Everything that I was just talking about that's in the Mountain West is going to eventually kind of trend to the south and east and kind of head like this. Um, so you can see that snowfall here we go into the overnight hours of tonight. We've got some pretty heavy freezing rain and sleet over parts of Seattle on the way down to northwest Oregon. Um, we've got some snow um, from the Cascades falling quite heavy there, by the way, um, all the way down through the or mountains of Oregon, um, on down even in parts of the northern Sierra Nevada. Um, and then we've also got this area of snow um, in the Rockies. That area of snow in the Rockies will continue to trend eastward throughout the day. Um, notice, though, even through the day tomorrow, we've still got a lot of precipitation back into the Cascades at that point. Um, and then we'll continue to, you know, these little bands coming out of the Cascades are going to be the ones that could cross the plains. The first batch, as early as late tomorrow, remember, we're working in a very dry environment, so a lot of the stuff that makes it out of this area is going to kind of fall apart quickly. Um, but, nonetheless, you can see eastern Colorado all the way on over to Chicago, some flurries and light snowfall, certainly not out of the question. Um, as we make our way through the afternoon of our Wednesday. That sinks southeastward, and this is kind of the beginning of what could be our next little system here. And whoa, that played a little bit too quickly, but you got a little bit of a precursor, right? Here's how this could play out. Um, right now, it looks like if you live down here through Nashville, um, in a kind of similar area to where we just got some of those heavier snowfall totals, it, it might be worth watching the potential um, for some snowfall um, as well as the potential for some ice accretion in those zones. So monitor that there. Um, I, don't, I don't think this is going to be a big event um, in the way of snow or necessarily the um, accumulation or accretion of ice. But at this point, it does look like at least a light to moderate event there. Also at this point, we've still got lake effect snow ongoing wrapping around our most recent system here over the Great Lakes. We've still got snow moving through parts of the southern Ohio Valley. 
as well as parts of southern Pennsylvania on down through Washington, D.C. Um, and continuing, you can see, look at how this system kind of tries to pick on up a little bit. Starts off as some snowfall here in western North Carolina's mountains. Um, northeast uh, Tennessee through eastern Kentucky, these areas some snow. Notice at this point, we're still getting stuff back on over here in the Rockies. Um, but I do think our potential for a winter storm does increase as we go through our Friday here. Really over the entirety of this region, but especially here closer um, towards parts of Long Island and its surrounding zones. Um, you can see that there. So again, maybe I don't again expect a huge winter storm, but nonetheless this is a winter storm by definition, but a very brief winter storm at that. So if we look at total snowfall through this point, if you live in eastern Tennessee, you could get another, um, you know, worthwhile event of a few inches. Um, but you notice this also includes the Ohio Valley. On over there, all the way to the northeastern shores of the U.S., some totals of some heavier snowfall there. But again, up until that point, look at the um, lake effect snow that's going to be directly impacting places around Watertown, um, New York. Some of these totals, um, 20 inches of snow. Um, same deal just southeast of Buffalo there. Um, of course, some of the pictures there um, from that Buffalo Bills game of the snowfall around the stadium. Um, just incredible, um, the amount of snow um, that was coming down in that region. Um, and it looks like we're going to get another you know, couple, couple feet um, in some of these isolated locations off the lakes. Uh, but let's zoom back out here. Again, look at how much snow we've got through the end of this week in the Cascades. This is a lot of snow, everyone. Um, uh, several feet. Um, possible in those higher elevations here. Blizzard conditions not out of the question either. So pretty dangerous snow events overall um, over there. But pretty, um, you know, decent snow events and, and, you know, keeping that snow drought from coming back, right, over parts of New York City. So good to see um, the snow finally hit some of these areas that have been lacking it for so long. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind. All right, let's um head over. Uh, we we only got a dusting on Sunday. Just got our pipes thawed out after freezing. Yeah, um, it's gonna be getting warm pretty soon as well. Um, and yeah, let's let's go on over to the GFS model at this point. Um, I've kind of left you on something here on Omega. Let's go to pivotal weather. All right, now you're looking at pivotal weather, and let's go ahead and play this on out. Again, there's that snow moving out of the Cascades. Here's that little winter storm we can get later this week. Um, again, it's it's not really a considerable winter storm by any stretch of the imagination here over parts of northeastern Ohio through parts of West Virginia um, and Pennsylvania as well as the northeastern shores. Behind this, we get that secondary Arctic blast. So you can see that 1044 millibar high taking over parts of the central U.S. This is our final kind of Arctic high that moves on over the country. Then once that moves out, we kind of get a break. That cooler air settles over the southeast, but right on its heels, we've got warmer air, and we've also got a return of southerly flow and moisture. So I do think as we head um, about a week out from now, that's when we start to watch flood threats return over the south central U.S., particularly including the Arklotex on up into um, the Midwest, parts of the Great Lakes region as well. So wouldn't fully um, rule out a little bit of snow on the northern end of that either, Okay. Um, but overall, at this point, that looks like a rain event that heads north and then east. And then notice we get, it looks like more rain events um, through the south right behind that. And again, maybe far northern in snow, but overall we're trending towards what is a, you know, wetter, but not necessarily snowier period of time here. Um, and we can look at the same thing with the Euro. Here comes that near-term system. Again, very light snow um, through parts of the Ohio Valley and southern New England northeast region. Uh, and then as I go back on over here to the Euro, and we play this out again, and this is the f all the way. Here comes next week, and look at this. There comes that rain again, so Tuesday into Wednesday looks like it'll be pretty rainy there over parts of the south. And we even have some of these clusters um, of, of showers and storms down here over parts of southeast Texas. And I can look at the lightning flash density the lightning flash rate and see kind of where those six hour lightning zones are according to the euro and you know we do see some 
thunder activity spark up over southern, Fl uh, not Florida, um, South Texas as we head towards next week. So could we see severe weather return um, from Dallas southeastward all the way down to the Houston metro area? Not, not out of the question. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then you can see some of that lightning and thunder heads eastward through the Mid-South. You can see clusters of storms, even as far north as the Midwest with the Euro model. Uh, but look at how even towards the very end of this, you can see more thunderstorm rounds expanding over the south-central U.S. Um, so what this overall equates to in the 6 to 10 day range is a much warmer pattern and a much wetter pattern. Here's that 6 to 10 um, day precip outlook. And just look. Um, that that green color that you see there in Texas, that is the fifth shade of green. Um, there It goes up to seven shades of different greens here on this type of graphic. Um, so, you know, you're pretty, pretty, pretty high um, precipitation and flooding threat um, if you go up on and through that area. Um, the Weather Prediction Center um, has their day three through seven hazards map. And I do want to show you that real quick. Um, let's go on over here. Again, as we go, you know, we've got the hazardous cold in the in that range. But look at this, we've got the heavy rain, the 22nd and the 23rd in the 3 through 7 day range. So in southeast Texas and southern Louisiana, I really want you to be prepared um, for this heavy rain that's going to be moving on through. And I do think your flood threat is going to go on the rise. But anyway, that's beyond the point. We're here to talk about cold air that's in the near term. Um, not necessarily the th thaw that's on the way down the line. Um, but, you know, pivotal weather here, which is what we're using. I um, unveiled some new graphics a couple weeks ago. And the way these graphics look, I think they look pretty good. Let me know in the chat what you think. Um, I think they look pretty nice. Um, but you can see here's this first wave of Arctic air that's overspreading the southeastern U.S. at this point. Of course, the worst of this has already been through the upper Midwest. There's a little bit of a reprieve up there, though, um, for the near term. Um, here we go at this point. Um, you can see, you know, at negative 20 to negative 30. Um, and what I mean by that is so 20 to 30 degrees below normal over the southeastern U.S., here we go as we make our way towards Wednesday. Again, kind of a little bit closer to average there over the north central, but look at this new Arctic wave that starts to push southward, and it kind of develops quickly. Um, so late Friday going into our Saturday, we kind of see temperatures 20 to 30 below near where they should be. Over Nebraska, northeast Kansas, southern Iowa, as well as northern Missouri, continuing this out, you can see that cold air overspreads this head southeast. And I think there's going to be a little burst of that colder air that moves. So you can see it there in eastern Nebraska and western Iowa. Some spots are going to get close to 45 degrees below average and even challenge the wind chills they saw out of this first system. Yes, wind chills could be below, you know, negative 20 in that minus 20 to minus 30 degree below normal um, departure level there. I mean, you can see as that, that wave sinks southeastward. This one is actually a little bit more intense if you live through parts of the Carolinas the mid-Atlantic as well. The northeast going to be heavily impacted by this Arctic wave as well. Um, but also notice down the line, I can't help but point this out, while this Arctic air finishes up in the southeast corridor, we've already got that El Nino ridging returning here over the north central. Um, and you can see we get about 5 to 15 degrees below, uh, or excuse me, above normal. I've been so used to saying below recently. Um, over here over the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, as we head towards early next week. And then here we go. We see that warmth develop. And look at this ridging by the time we go towards the midweek time frame. It doesn't take long for pretty much the whole country to be back to being above average like we've seen countless times already this, you know, the late fall into the winter time frame. And what this does is I think that sets the stage for more rain in the way of the rain precipitation. But also the next time we can get cold air to push on the door of that warm air, that's when we'll also have to watch for severe weather to eventually return. I'm not saying that's going to happen in the next 7 to 10 days. Certainly could be some marginally to even, you know, scattered severe weather um, down there in the south central as that, you know, wave of rain develops next week. But notice these cooler pockets that maybe try to develop and force those warmer pockets out of here. Those are the ones that you would kind of have to keep a close watch on for um, where those meet for that severe weather to initiate here over the plains. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in this evening. Let's continue this on um, at this point. Um, but you can see um, I am monitoring your chat messages as well. 
Again, here comes that warm to next week. The EPS Ensemble is pretty much in agreement on that. At this point, I don't see any huge cold down, uh, cool downs in the near in the near future necessarily. Um, you can see colder air pushing through the south central. Here's that first wave, second wave. There's the warm air. We notice there's this little pocket of cooler than average air sneaking through the south central 12 to 13 days out. So this is a pretty long way out, okay, to be talking about. But nonetheless, as that's occurring, if there's some, a storm system on the meeting of the cold and warm air, that could trigger something. But I think overall we just need to watch for a more active and slightly stormier pattern than what we've been used to as we head um, about a week out from now beyond this cold air. But of course we're still talking about this cold air, and let's go back to the Euro and go over to our, um, and t t take a look at our wind chills that we've got on the way. And we can, you know, we can look at this, and, and, sh and I'll show you. Again, you know, into our Tuesday morning, this morning we were 20, 30 degrees below in the wind chill department. Um, you can see into tomorrow morning, wind chills negative 22 there in eastern Iowa, negative 24 in northwestern Illinois. Um, through parts of the Great Lakes, interior, northeast, and New England, all those areas, it's cold. All the way down to the Gulf Coast, this is just darn right chilly air. Um, and you can see, we get a little bit of, uh, you know, there's, tomorrow morning, there's a little bit of a reprieve over the n far north central. I mean, and what I mean by reprieve is, instead of being negative 30, you're negative 20. But here we go. Look at this as we go fr Friday, Friday afternoon. It's negative 20 wind chills over the north central um, while we get a little bit of a break here in the southeast. But look at this into our Saturday morning. This is that concerning resurgence of those colder wind chills. I guarantee you some of these wind chills in eastern Nebraska and southwestern Iowa are going to be around negative 45. I know you can't see that on this map, um, but I can do cursor readout and we can kind of move around. You know, you catch some of these, you catch a negative 37 up in there. I caught one of those just a second ago. There's a negative 38 right there. Um, so there are pockets of even colder air um, locally that are going to move through some of these zones, okay? Um, but look at this. I mean, all the way to the North Carolina coastline, it's feeling like 18. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, feeling like 20. The Arklatex, it's feeling like 14. So a whole, you know, a huge piece of the country is just well below where they should be for this time of the year. Um, and then at this point, look at this up through parts of interior northeast. It's negative 20 for those wind chills as well. Um, turn cursor radar off, back off for now. I think Saturday night going into Sunday is going to be a cold time here in the parts of the eastern um, and southeast as well. We've still got some of these bands. The Arctic Blast, you can already see it starting to break apart a little bit. A band of it up there in the northeast. Band of it in the midwest. Band of it here in the Tennessee Valley as well as the southern Ohio Valley. All these kind of colder areas, um, really over the east, the jet stream is going to be kind of like so. You can see me following my cursor there. Um, yeah, the jet, jet stream like that. That's what we're kind of watching for that colder air. But eventually, look at how the wind chills. I mean, this is a morning wind chill as we head towards Wednesday next week. <laughs> Unless you're... I mean, look at this. In the morning, your wind chills next week, as opposed to being negative 30 over parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota and Nebraska and Iowa, it's going to be 28 to 30 above zero. So big improvements there. And in fact, um, we can look at what some of those afternoon highs are going to do over that area. And I can tell you, we can try and, you know, we see some of those greens break through the blues. Um, and you can definitely see warmer air moving up. But look in the south. Late next week, I think we're going to have some widespread 60s uh, bouncing back up into parts of the Arklatex and through the Mid-South. So that really makes for interesting conditions there again. And if we can get this cold air over here to push on the warmer that's in the south, that suddenly turns things over um, to where you're kind of uh, watching out um, at that point. For, for a bigger storm system. Let's read through some of these chat messages. We've got um, a little bit less of you than usual on here. Um, let's see. Not a very active time, though, so very understandable, um, other than the cold air. Um, so how much snow can I see for that winter storm here in Indiana? Great question. Let's look at that. Uh, we'll look at that in a second. Wind chills going crazy. Yeah, been a lot of cancellations so far this winter, and it will continue for the reasonable future. 
having temperatures like Canada or Alaska in the mid south so unreal yeah you know there's a there's a lot of um, I get questions I mean they're you know they're very reasonable questions about you know how can you have global warming and have these big cold blasts um, there's a, you know there's a lot of shifts that still go on in weather um, just because you know you know global warming is you know very much so likely going on um, and across the world doesn't mean there's colder time periods that happen and of course the reason it's colder here um, those wind chills are much colder over parts of the north central U.S. is because we're looking at you know it trying to warm on up over parts of Canada as well so we've had that you know the stratospheric warming event um, up there. Um, but you can see some pockets of the U.S., you know, at times, kind of colder than they are up here in central Canada and Alaska. Um, so that's really interesting to look at. Um, but let's go on over back here at this point now to Radar Omega. Here's how much snow you could get there um, in Indiana. Um, you were asking me about your snow in Indiana out of this next system. I expect kind of going Thursday into our Friday, I believe that's when you get your snow. Yeah, um, you can see that accumulation. We might have a little bit of lake effect um, in the northern part of Indiana prior, uh, but it looks like overall, just looking at the amount of snow you get all the way through the end of this week, some spots of Indiana getting as little as an inch, I think that's going to be around the lowest. Higher spots getting closer to three to four inches of snow. Uh, but, uh, you know, not a big snow event by any means for anyone here. Um, but, yeah, it's it's going to really begin to warm on up over the country as we head into next week. Uh, but, yeah, while, uh, while I'm on here, um, continue to ask me any questions you have. Again, we've got a big snow event going on and continuing the next few days here over parts of the Cascades, Idaho. Um you know, consider my channel's called One Nation Weather. I do a lot of coverage of the East, and I leave out the West sometimes. So I'm going to start including the West a little bit more in my forecasting videos. Uh, but again, lake effect there, there, um, up here, here. Now you can see all the lake effect zones on this map. But um, I appreciate everybody's support recently, of course, as well, um, while I'm just kind of sitting on here and chatting. We're up to 2,650 subscribers, which is awesome. Um, just a couple weeks ago, I was working my way through the mid-1,000s, and now all of a sudden we're into 2,500-plus territory. That's crazy. Yes, I, ran I randomly circle stuff while I'm talking. Um, but if you... If you want to directly support the channel, I'm the little dollar sign there in the chat box. It's for super thanks if you ever want to do that. Um, but no need for that. It's just greatly appreciated if you do. Um, but yeah, shoot away your questions. You don't have to pay to ask me questions. You can always do that. Um, and I will answer them for you. Do I cover the entire USA? Yeah, I mean, I try. Um, that's that's the goal here. Um, LA for tours by Ray Maves. That is always my goal. To cover the entire... United States, you know, again, that's that's kind of what I say, the, the, the 48 states, right, so I do the contiguous U.S., but my, in the tropical season, I believe, Aleva Tours, you joined me uh, just after tropic season, and missed a lot of my tropical coverage, but I do tropics as well, I, at one point I thought of naming my channel like um, One Nation in the Tropics, um, instead of One Nation Weather, because I do cover the tropics as well. So during hurricane season, I'll be covering what's going like that, 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 of course, for you here as well. I'm along with the contiguous USA coverage that will continue as well. Um, but over here over the Northwest, I want to start covering the West Coast a little bit more. Um, but, you know, in case y'all didn't know, whenever I do my videos, they're time-stamped. So if you ever, if you're watching on your mobile device and you put your um, finger on the little slider there, or just tap on the screen, a little slider will pop up. You can even do it on this live stream and go back and rewatch parts if you missed any. Um, but you can skip ahead, you know, like to, if I'm talking about the Northeast snowstorm and you live in the Northeast, well then you want to see that, right? You don't want to hear me talking about the West Coast the whole time. Now, there are some people who are going to be intrigued and want to hear everything I'm talking about across the country and how it plays into their weather, but it doesn't necessarily matter for everyone. Um, which is why I kind of divide everything into timestamps for that reason. Uh, so, but you know, dangerous cold 
is the main story. But I just want to show you how quickly into next week these blues and these pinks disappear. And unfortunately, and this is not getting rid of your snow chance for the rest of the winter by no means across the U.S. for anyone. I'm not saying that. Um, but this is kind of depleting them a little bit for at least about a week. I mean, you can clearly see as we go into next week, there's not many blues to be seen on our map. There's a lot of light blues. There's not a lot of deep blues, reds, bl you know, purples up there. But you see that GFS trying to indicate some of that colder air trying to kind of meander southward. Um, but many areas of the south are still waiting on snow um, all the, t to this day. Um, now let's let's do something a little different. We're going to look at how much snow has been fallen. The obs observed snow over the last 48 hours here. Let's, you know, let's do 48 hours. Does the Arctic front come to the West Tennessee area this week? Awesome question. Um, the Arctic front is going to hit West Tennessee pretty hard in a couple of rounds. All right, I'm zooming in on Western Tennessee. Tennessee. I don't know where your exact location is. You don't have to specify um, if you don't want to. Um, that would help me out here, though. Um, but from Memphis to Nashville, it's going to be getting cold soon. Let's get this to where we can go back and watch what happened here, or what is happening in temperature department. Um, so here we go, playing things out overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Over western Tennessee, here are our temperatures. Waking up to like a negative 3 in Jackson, Tennessee. Memphis, near 0. Same deal in Nashville, close to 0 degrees. This is very cold air. And I think down here in southeast Tennessee, there's going to be that enhanced pocket of it. Some spots in southeast Tennessee are going to be closer to negative 15. Uh, for a temperature there, Collierville. Let's see if I can find you. Collierville, where are you? I know I'm going to find you. There you are. Yeah, tomorrow morning is going to be a cold one. And remember, this is not wind chill. I'm not factoring in wind. Um, in the afternoons, hard to get to the freezing mark. Um, and then we skip ahead to that late week blast. You get cold again. And I don't think you're going to be, again, as cold as the eastern part of the state. But you're still pushing sub-zero wind chills here in places like Collierville. All right. Uh, so keep that in mind. Let's go over here. To weather.gov. And I'm going to take a look at what you've got going on over there. I'm Collierville. I can show you how cold you're. I want to make sure I get you the most accurate info as well. Had to shovel 14 inches off the roof today and it was cold. Yeah, I bet. You watch me from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, I believe. So I, I bet. Okay. we've. I'm reading off to you now. There's a wind chill advisory in effect until Wednesday morning there in Collierville, Tennessee. Uh, for very cold wind chills as low as negative 10. Okay? And then we're going to have another one, a round of, round of that, as we go towards the end of this week. Uh, it looks like they're in a place like Collierville. By the way, I don't know if any of you know you can do this. Um, of course, don't, don't stop watching me. Uh, but I don't know if any of you know you can do this. You can go to... Look at this look at this map right here this is showing you the extended forecast for Collierville right on your screen right now if you go to uh, weather.gov and then you type in that search bar that's going to pop up on the top part of your screen you can get the National Weather Service forecast for the next seven days um, it does include an, an hourly hour by hour graph down here as well that you can access down here um, in the bottom bottom right so if you scroll down whether you're swiping on your phone um, or if you're just on a computer like I am right now, you can go down the hourly forecast right here. All of this is really useful. 
information. You can see the hourly forecast on the screen right here. It shows you those temperatures hour by hour. You can hover over an hour and go down and look at what that's showing all the different values for you at that hour. Um, so really cool stuff um, if you want to use that. Um, but it looks like as you go into Thursday there in Collierville, you're watching out for a chance of some freezing rain um, throughout the day as well so and then in a friday blustery with wind gusts maybe upwards of 20 25 miles per hour as you get that second round of cold air to move in tonight it's three i think that's the coldest you get out of this entire set of arctic blasts but friday night going into our saturday looks like you'll get down to nine and with those stronger winds that could um, keep your wind chills at a lower rate um, into there as well yeah, you are welcome for the information. And I'm hopefully to all of you who are watching, again, you can go to weather.gov and access all this information right at your fingertips. Um, can Where can we go to see the totals of snow for the recent storm? Like how many inches in Nashville, Knoxville, Bristol, Roanoke, and so on? Oh, I am so glad you asked. You asked an excellent question because I already have this graphic pulled up. It's as if you um, read my mind about what I was going to talk about next. Does this look like what you wanted to see? Because um, I already had this pulled up um, by, by chance, um, and I just clicked on over to it just now. Let's zoom in on the Ohio Valley and see what some of the different totals um, equated to there over that region. Here's what we're looking at, okay? Here's some of your totals across from parts of Arkansas all the way it really the totals picked up in northern Mississippi to be honest with you um, and then the totals continued all the way through parts of Tennessee Kentucky on up into Appalachia um, those heaviest totals though they kind of miss Nashville a little bit on the north end of south side of town but still around a half foot um, in Nashville proper um, but yeah places like Knoxville Tennessee um, Places like Knoxville, Tennessee, you know, maybe 6 to 10 inches of snow fell there. We're looking at the observations right now. Um, it looked like around 7.3 to or so inches of snow in Knoxville proper. Um, just northeast of Knoxville, they're closer to Johnson City. Um, we got 6.4 inches of snow. Or no, up towards Johnson City, actually. We got a couple inches of snow. It looks like I miss you the worst there. I apologize. I think actually we're looking at the 6-inch total might have been there and. um it was six to eight inches there near Knoxville. Um, in Nashville, about five to six inches of snow came on down. Of course, locally higher areas around town. Um, in southeast Kentucky, we got five to seven inches. Anywhere in the purples above a half foot. Uh, so even near uh, the north, northern Mississippi, there near, near Tupelo and just north of Tupelo itself. If you head into Tupelo's northern suburbs like New Albany, Baldwin, Ripley, some of these areas got some heavier snow on up to Corinth as well. Memphis got a, maybe four to six inches of snow, uh, but it really the totals really picked up through southeast Tennessee. Um, we can look at the totals. I don't think the northeast totals are showing up much yet. Oh, no, I'm wrong. Here's the totals all the way through just about a couple hours ago, actually. Um, we can see in the northeast here some of your totals. Um, are two to four inches so far. Looks like New York City picked up about one to three, which happens to be in line um, with my prediction that I made yesterday as well. I don't know if you saw that video. Boston's overachieving a little bit, closer to three, three and a half inches of snow. Um, and this is, you know, this was at least a little bit more of a coast rider, right? You can see those totals actually have more heavily concentrated closer to the coast. They're already beginning to pick up in, um, in Maine as well even though the system's not even done there yet. Vermont, Montpelier, I called three to six for you, and you're not quite there yet. And I don't know if you're going to get there, to be honest with you, at this point. Um, but I did well on that main prediction. Some of these areas down here in eastern PA and northern New Jersey underachieved a little bit in comparison to what was expected, but um, any snow is snow <laughs> right at this point in this part of the country. Um, where it's been hard pressed to get snow. So I must say that. Um, but Timothy, I'm glad I could um, bring you those totals um, and that snowfall analysis. Let's also, while we're on this, let's go to the northwest. So it hasn't snowed yet in the Cascades, but it's getting ready to do so. Um, let's go over National Weather Service forecasts. National 
Um, yeah, I don't have too much more for y'all. I'm on this stream. It's been kind of a slow one as well. Not as much um, traffic coming to the channel throughout this stream. So I am um, thinking of kind of beginning to close this one down pretty soon here. Um, I've got kind of a busy rest of the week. Um, and of course we don't have any major systems on the way right now anyway. Um, but I do have kind of a busier rest of the week. So I'm hoping to get a video out tomorrow. Um, but I don't know what we'll be able to do on Thursday and Friday. I'll, I should be back with you Saturday, though, if, if I can't do anything Thursday and Friday. But I often try to squeeze something out, whether it's a stream or a video for you. Um, cool weather maps from Chester County, Pennsylvania, measured 4.2 inches just northwest of Philadelphia. Okay, so some of these, I think some of these um, totals as well, you know, it says through 7 p.m. I don't know if those are actually quite as accurate as I want them to be. Let's zoom out here on Omega just for a second. Hang tight, I'm going to pull up something real quick. Uh, Weather Prediction Center. Let's go. Because they got their summary up now, so you can look at how much to what the totals are. So these are preliminary storm totals through 9 a.m. this morning. Yeah, that's not helpful much. Um, New York, Delaware had already had 3.6 inches at that point. That's pretty nice. Oh, here we go. Let's go. Where's Tennessee on here? Tennessee didn't get snow. <laughs> oh, here we go. Nashville's official reading was 4.5. I mean, are you the only person who does not want snow? No. There are people who do not want snow right now. Um, I've heard some comments of people not wanting the snow, but I want it. I haven't gotten any um, in the Carolinas, so I'm still waiting. Okay. How much snow for Chester County, Pennsylvania on Friday? Good question. Light accumulation. Okay over pretty much the entire state of Pennsylvania. I can show you it real quick on the map. All the way, you know, the Guru and GFS have been doing a pretty good job painting this picture. This is like a, an inch, about an inch to three inches over most of the state. I think western Pennsylvania is going to have the better concentration of nicer snow. Um, and that's just because lake enhancement a little bit. But if we get that load of strength right here off the coast, then some areas through here will also get some better accumulation. It does look like it could bring some decent snow here to the Ohio Valley, though. Notice how it kind of jumps um, areas there in the Midwest. But yeah, thank you so much to everybody who's joined me on this kind of quick live update um had about 20 uh, 20 to 30 of you on here a good throughout most of the stream um thank you to everybody who again who for joining me again i don't know uh, how my schedule is going to play out for making videos um i try again i love weather you know and i try to get those videos out to you as much as i can so i'm hoping i'll have a new video um tomorrow and there's a pretty good chance I will, or a stream, probably a video tomorrow. But then as we go into Thursday and Friday, I'm not exactly sure how much time I'll have, so we will see what happens those days. But I should be back with you Saturday if I'm not there Thursday or Friday for an update. Good news is that other than this cold air, which I think I've given per plenty of good updates on, um, we don't have too much going on. I don't consider this upcoming snowfall event to be too much. Um, so, not a bad time for me to be a little busier and maybe miss a day or two. Um, but I've been going pretty hard on the channel here for the last couple months, covering events more and more, um, with more in-depth tools, looking at Omega here. And I've been loving every minute of it, spending with you guys. But that's it for tonight, everyone. You are welcome. 
um, Michelle Nelson, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, again, thank you to everybody um, who has been on the stream tonight. If you have any further questions, I'm ending the stream now. But you can just shoot me a um, message. The comments will open up like normal after the stream. Um, so you can just send me a message there and I'll, I can answer any other additional questions you have. But that's it for this. Y'all have a good night.